Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Papa. It's D. About to react to this vid by Insider Hotspot. This is King Von the Demon into the mind of a serial killer. That reminds me <laughs> of uh, Solo Minati on his spiritual soul videos. He used to always be like, we need to talk about these demons. <laughs> he will always say it like that. I wonder what he's up to. I keep saying I'm going to check on him, but I always forget. Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to see how he's, you know, supposedly, well, how he was. Uh, supposedly a uh, serial killer that's interesting I mean of course I knew that you know he killed some people but I didn't know that people were classifying him as an actual serial killer like that that sounds a bit extreme but sure let's get the tea let's watch you gonna need three four hands for the porch at first that shit happened Troy and Vaughn what the niggas jumped off head first and when they did they jumped off at a, at a higher level more aggressive than the who was around or was Vaughn was just a he was a different individual bro he was just he was manny he was you know what I'm saying shorty was crazy he was on that he was you know what I'm saying wrong with him that's not human man you're not regular man mm. devil man cause that nigga was the devil man. not the devil he lived. that nigga was the devil they don't understand that the police they move on hey post them T-Roy and Prime yeah. but nah man Vaughn like yeah you really couldn't when he started doing what he was doing here yeah, I really couldn't you know come here around folks unless you was doing that act because he was sliding he was a slider bro bro was crazy so yeah he was a slider and like he just walked up to me like man he like good look straight I'm like like he don't look at me look straight I'm like okay he boy why well, I just ran up on that bitch KI I was just ran up on him KI called KI she was the last one coming out the gate Oh on God, I'm OD soul. Boss trail is folks work. Like it's not that like yeah. that was folks work. He did that before he even went to school. Hey yo squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. We knew King Bond was a real one, but what we didn't know was that he was a alleged serial disguised as a rapper. His body's a legendary, and even his ops tell of how savage he was. Now, law officials are releasing documents detailing even more hits that may have been pinned to King Bond. He lived, mm. ate, and slept with catching the ops on his mind. Early morning, late That's night, nice Bond was catching bodies on sight, allegedly. Those around him call him many things, but one thing they all agree on is he was about that life. Why? We're going to find out. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. Chicago was mainly considered the home of drill. Chief Keith, the Lil Dirk, to the late FBG Duck, the wave of disrespect to their off became like a game. But legends speak of the birth of a super savage every 10,000 years. With the trenches in his blood genetically enhanced for drilling, their hearts hold no remorse. Their mind designed to think of ways to catch the ops lacking and to survive. 10,000 years passed, and the next super duper savage entered the world. His name, Davon Daquan Bennett, also known as King Von. Bro came up out the womb ready to stretch something, and he lived up to all the legends spoke of as a super duper savage. He had to, growing up in Chicago. His motto from small was Merc or be murked, and by his reputation, it's clear he chose one of those. Von was beating cases and turning them into tales in his music, playing right in his ops' faces. Vaughn would tweet about shootings and murking ops like it was his favorite pastime. And the crazy thing is, it wasn't cap, it was true. Twitter was like his obituary diary where he detailed the most evil thoughts and documented the ops he caught. Why? Vaughn was a different breed. His mind was infatuated with the drilling. And Why do everybody do that? Why do they snitch on themselves? Why do they cold and devious but be so cool and chill? That's why he considered one of them one. I ain't never tell y'all my sins and crimes. He was always on Motown before. <laughs> Take it to my grave, child. Take 600 in J-Hood. You couldn't be around Vaughn if you didn't want to get into shootouts because it was green light no matter the time of day. Vaughn was going to always stretch something if he had to. If you was hanging with Vaughn, you had to accept everything that came with Vaughn. You had to accept that you was going to be in shooters. Accept that he was going to be that. And you had to be with it. You feel me? With Vaughn. You feel me? And this was a lot of time. Everybody didn't want to hang with him. They couldn't. Because you had to be on what he was on. A lot. The one on what Vaughn was on. 
was fine. I was like that. You feel He was sliding on the ops like he was the national O block ice skating. Not shit. him making all his friends yeah, murder. Really when he started doing what he was doing here, not really couldn't, you know, couldn't get around folks unless you was doing that act. Because he was sliding. He was a slider, bro. Bro was crazy. So, yeah, yeah he was a slider. Right? <laughs> and this wasn't just fine in the trenches. This was also fine after he built the buzz in the music biz. Word on the street is Von even used to be robbing people he just kicked it with on camera while going to interviews with Durkio. Dude was really just always scheming to catch something lacking. What? You know gonna get on and still be robbing. They doing interviews, he'll rob the interview after they done interviewing. Yeah, I don't know that like with Dirk, but when folks was first getting on, he's in Atlanta robbing everybody. Bro, that's crazy. Yeah, Dirk will be doing the interview, don't get your way to in the elevator by folks, and he go do that, y'all, and all that. Why are you snitching though? You spilling all the time. Rappers be on the internet talking tough. Maybe have a little run with an op here and there. But Vaughn, once it was up, it was up. Dude was getting up at sunrise, waking homies up, talk about we on, like catching an op was breakfast or something. Wow. Wake me up. 8 a.m. Come on. 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 Vaughn not having regular dreams, just having straight nightmares and one on one sessions with the devil, bro. The, the ways of be like, yo, let's go. Before By you brush your teeth. Those who knew That's him crazy. said one thing in common about bro. He was trained to go. That's what I'm saying. That shorty was the best. They was something was wrong with him. That's not human, man. He's not regular, man. That nigga was the devil, man. That nigga was the devil, man. For real, man. That nigga was Mm. The legend states that in order for the super duper savage to become a demon, he must first experience an event, a trigger that causes him to dive off the porch head first. For King Von, that moment was allegedly when O.D. Perry got murdered. Porch at first. That shit happened, Troy and Von. Where the niggas jumped off head first, and when they did, they jumped off at a at a higher level, more aggressive than the niggas who was around or was. Von unlocked his inner savage, and from there, it was all smoke, racking up body counts like it was arcade tickets to win the prize. Soon, the rumors of his notoriety started getting out. The names of the ops he took out started being called and began to unfold to the public. And needless to say. Von was a cap about what the streets were saying. Everything he portrayed to be and rapped about, he stood on. On October 2012, Von put in some work for his gang taking out an op. His name, Richard Modell, also known as Modell of STL slash EBT. According to reports, Modell was leaking up with a shorty on her porch when Von walked up and opened fire, murking Modell and leaving his cousin in a wheelchair after he was hit up so many times his stomach was open. Von entered into his obituary diary, mocking Modell after snatching his soul. Von was still hungry for more. Bro couldn't even wait until things calmed down. That same month after Merck and Modell, he spun the block again allegedly, this time catching P5 and Gyro City lagging. Official news reports state that Derek Jackson, also known as P5, was hit up multiple times before succumbing to his injuries. According to the incident report, P5 was hit in the neck, chest, back, right hand, left jaw, and everything. And just like that, P5 became a new addition into the obituary diary. Bomb was recording hits like it was an episode in the show talk about who gonna get murked in November, leaving fans with a cliffhanger. Not a, you know, the way he described this is wild. Not a cliffhanger. Um, no, nobody in law enforcement was watching this. Like, oh, he, he talking about who he killing. He naming names and all that. Nobody did anything. They just let him snitch on himself on Twitter and let him continue to kill people. Okay. November came and we got the answer. Rodney Stewart, also known as Boss Trail of STL GBT. His hit came just two days before his ticket to get out of the rack to start a new life in Iowa away from the paranoia and gang lifestyle. Boss Trail was found face down in the alley in the 2600 block of West 83rd Street with a shot to the back of the head. It's rumored that a shorty was used to lure Boss Trail to the alley where instead he met with T-Roy who ended him. But Jay Hood allegedly clears the air and gives the credit of the shooting to King Von, the other half of the twin demons with T-Roy. This is his raps. Like, he was really, like, telling y'all what he was doing and, like, how he go, like, he would change his shoes, he catch it before he even hit school. Like, like he called Trail or something. He was on my podcast telling me he had full on God and OD soul. 
false trail is false work. Like, it's not that, like, yeah. Yeah. The song J-Hood was referring to the speaking on the Merc and the Boss Trail was King Von's track GTA, another insert of the obituary down. In May 2014, a man by the name of Malcolm Stuckey was next. King Von and affiliate Michael Wade, also known as Big Mike, caught bro lacking at a birthday party in the 5700 block of South LaSalle Street around Inglewood and did him in. This would be a hit that got both him and Von took to jail. Von beat the body, and when Malcolm's sister heard the news, she had to get a lot off her chest, and you can't really blame her. Her brother ain't coming back, and Von was out having a successful rap career, rapping about his dirt that he did in the streets. Two things about Von. He was always wanting the op smoke, and he never forgot an op that disrespected him. K.I., the legendary female assassin of STL EBT, was poking at Von for losing two of his friends while he was locked up. Well, Von was out, and give back season was in. On April 11th, 2014, Von, along with another O Block member, made their move after K.I. posted up her location on Twitter. Her confidence was high, but King Von's was higher. She was allegedly with her right-hand man and homie Butter. When Vaughn pulled up and offloaded shots hitting K.I. in the mouth, neck, and chest a total of nine times on the 6400 block of South Eberhardt Avenue, eyewitnesses state that K.I. ran and collapsed on the porch fighting for her life. But neighbors say Barnes and a friend were walking along the sidewalk when a gunman started K.I. was succumbed to her injuries at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. Jay Hood later did an interview with Fuchsia's TV confirming it was Vaughn that murdered K.I. And not only that, he said after Vaughn did it, he told him what was up. Ran him over. K.I. called K.I. She the last one coming out the gate. Literally. Yeah, if them that was with her that day, y'all know who y'all was with y'all was with her y'all when he ran up on y'all when she was the last one coming out that gate. Those are the ops that Vaughn called lack and you'd hear mostly about. But before now, many of them have been worried on the streets and people trying to piece together how many lives the demon took. Well, now, the police have started providing evidence of Vaughn's hits, and it's crazy how much dirt he did, allegedly. You know you want demon time when the police are investigating you for multiple hits. K.I.'s was one of the first they released documents on confirming it was Vaughn's handiwork. Here's how sinister the man was, allegedly. There was an official K.I. documentary where they were trying to piece together who murked her, and Vaughn was on that jump doing interviews and talking about how he was trying to smash and be with her. It's all over with. I want to get up in you or something. That sound about right? <laughs> that's something. That sound wrong, so yeah, I'll be saying wrong. Yeah, I probably did say that. Vaughn had interviewers talking about Vaughn was hurt, missing her, and tweeting about her, and Vaughn hyping them up with the troll and acting all in his feelings. Dude was really unremorseful up in the score. Documents would also be released on Modell where investigators pinned Vaughn as the one who ended his life. Two confirmed hits by law officials and we thought that was all. But they released more documents recently that really showed the level of the operation Vaughn was on when it came to catching his ops. Vaughn was moving like a mob boss orchestrating homicides because in these new documents they claim Vaughn was the one behind Carlton Weekly, aka FBG Ducks hit. Documents state that he put a 50k bag on Duck's head, then upped it to 100k. And when the homies collected on the bounty after Murky Duck, he bought each of them O Block chains. Pick the video of Vaughn at the icebox linking the chains. Here's some of the names he called to be engraved on the chain. See, locked up for FBG Duck's hit. Um, yeah, I don't know yeah. the name. Yeah, I know. See. Okay. Yeah. 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 locked up for FBG Duck's hit. Muwap. So it seems that the reports may be telling the truth. Everybody getting the chain is now locked up. You know, it would seem Vaughn was on a warpath to murk as many ops as he could, and he dang sure was accomplishing his goal. As we know, Vaughn met his end after an altercation with Quando Rondo outside a club in Atlanta where Quando homie Lil Tim pulled out the strap and hit him up. From the looks of things, if he didn't lose his life, many things could have happened. He could have took off and really took over the game. He could have been behind bars, or he could have just overall made a change in his life. There's no way to really say. But me personally, I feel like he was going to make a change for the better. And you could almost see it a little bit before he passed. It's like, even now with the information coming out from the cops and stuff like that, you got to take it with a grain of salt, because this all could be an intricate character assassination of a man that's no longer here to defend mm. himself. Vaughn is rumored to be behind more hits, and I won't be surprised if investigators release more info on other hits that he's responsible for, allegedly. And if any of this is true, one thing's for sure, there may never be another one like King Vaughn. He was like 
always just getting out of jail. You feel me? So it's like, every time he get out, it's like we get right back to where we was on. You feel me? It's like he wasn't even just in jail. Like he get right out of jail to me smell every time. So it's like he know he finna go back to jail or something. So he just trying to do as much shit as he can. Till next time. Um, what everybody described in this video, it don't seem like he would have turned his life around for the better. I don't think you can go from just murdering people left and right and like getting a kick out of it to being like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm done with that life. I don't want to do that anymore. I'm, I'm giving my life to God. I mean, you can. Anything's possible. But I would not trust a person like that. Someone who was capable of just murdering people in cold blood, like with no remorse and like actually bragging about it, making songs about it. Like I I can't see them actually switching their brain completely to be like a peaceful Zen person and, and <laughs> walking with Jesus. I just can't see that. And I've definitely heard like stories of people saying like, oh, they used to be in the streets and they turned their lives around like, you know, several years later. Um, so I mean, I guess anything's possible, but when it's to this degree, like this is really extreme. I feel like in those cases when people do turn their lives around, it's it's not like this. <laughs> they they wouldn't just kill people left and right. They might have, you know, killed one or two people or something, felt bad about it or whatever. They felt forced into the lifestyle. But no, he seemed like he was getting a kick out of it. This man was waking up at 8 a.m. before he had his eggs and bacon. Tomorrow, oh, let's go slide on the ops. Like, that's just not giving somebody who can be saved. From my personal opinion, that's how I view it. But, you know, yeah, this is wild. R.I.P. to him, but, hmm, interesting. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you want to watch, and I'll see y'all the next time. Bye.